Now, a British Muslim man has been convicted of committing atrocities and sentenced to death over events during the Bangladesh War of Independence more than 40 years ago. Chowdhury Muin Uddin, a trustee of the Muslim aid organisation, was one of two men found guilty in absentia by a war crimes court in Dhaka. His lawyers have denounced the proceedings as a show trial. In 1971, civil war broke out in Pakistan. After nine months of fighting, India took decisive action and Bangladesh was established from the old East Pakistan. Around three million people were killed and thousands of women raped. Chowdhury Muin Uddin, at the time a journalist in Dhaka, was accused of killing at least nine Dhaka University teachers, six journalists and three physicians in the last days of the war. Now resident in the UK and a leading figure in the Muslim community, today he was found guilty of all crimes and sentenced to death in absentia by a Bangladeshi war crimes tribunal. The judgment that has been pronounced today against Mr. Shafu Zaman and Mayuddin, and it concludes with the uh, verdict that uh, both of them should be hanged till death. So therefore, uh, that actually uh, meets our expectation, the prosecution's expectation. The tribunal's actions have caused unrest within the country. More than 100 people have been killed in clashes, and the Bangladeshi government has been accused of falsifying evidence. Well, Toby Cadman, a barrister and expert in international criminal law, has been representing Mr. Muin Uddin for the past three years and joins us now. Now, the prosecution say that Mr. Muin Uddin wasn't just a journalist. He was the leader of some sort of secret unit responsible for killings. He chose not to go and defend himself. Why? Well, um, good evening. Um, first of all, we've made a, a number of criticisms over this process uh, over the course of the, the last few years. Uh, we've requested that this comes under international supervision because of concerns that we have over the fairness of proceedings. Um, in the lead-up um, to this, there, there have been numerous allegations of witness abduction, witness coercion, falsifying evidence. So these are not just the usual concerns that defence lawyers make as to fairness of proceedings. It Is goes so much deeper than that. And what, what, what was he doing in 1971? I mean, was he just an independent journalist or was he somebody actually with a politically active past who was involved in other things too? Yes, he, he was a journalist. Um, he, he politically supported the unity of Pakistan. Um, he opposed the separation and independence. Um, but that was on a political level. Um, he, he, ha he never supported uh, the military action and has distanced him himself from the crimes that were committed. Uh, and he strongly um, denies any suggestion that he was involved in any way in the crimes that occurred in 1971. Because there were some contemporaneous press reports that also accused him um, that had been cited. I mean, how does he explain that? Well, he has uh, explained on a number of occasions uh, his role as a journalist. Um, he has stated that he, he left shortly after the war. He settled in this country. He's returned numerous times to Bangladesh over the last 40 years. He's never tried to conceal uh, his whereabouts and he's, he's never shied away from, from these allegations. Um, he's always stated that if there was a credible judicial process, then, then he would um, submit himself to that process to, to establish his innocence. But this is not a credible process and this is not a, le a legitimate um, tribunal. Is he prepared to answer for himself? I mean, you're, you're speaking for him tonight. I mean, is he, is he prepared to come out and confront all the allegations in detail? Yes, he, he will be um, confronting these allegations in due course. Um, it's understandable that um, this has come as somewhat of a shock after um, th this process of being tried in his absence. Uh, a death sentence awarded um, by a very flawed tribunal. He's understandably um, shocked today, but of course, in due course, he will be answering these allegations. Toby Cabin, thank you very much indeed for joining us, and we look forward to him joining us on the programme in due course.